Yes, thank you, Sister Dupe, for having me. Thank you. I'm so privileged to be here. It's such a blessing. Um, just like uh, Sister Dupe said, I'm part of the Blossom Network. It's been such a blessing. She's, you know, her life, her ministry, and all the things that the Lord is doing in her through her has been such a blessing and encouragement for me. And uh, secretly, I'm just, you know, she's my mentor, <laughs> you know, following her. Yeah, you know, when she spoke about uh, the things about the young people and um, and what we do, I saw uh, um, the Heart of Good Foundation. Um, she was the one that helped me register that uh, community interest company. And um, she's been such a great support uh, since then. So um, I'm happy to be here. I'm very, very grateful to God for this opportunity. And I welcome everybody also um, to this prayer session today. As you already, um, as already has been introduced, the topic or with our focus is praying over our God-given dreams and vision. God-given dreams and vision. I would have loved us to just go straight away and begin to pray, but um, I'm also aware that it might not be every one of us that already have the vision or even know what that even means. You know, what does it even mean? Do I even have a dream? Do I have a vision from God? You know, uh, what would I be praying into? It is just for the benefit of those ones that would just, you know, to do a little bit of introduction. Uh, your dream, you know, growing up, we all probably have dreams. Children, you have dreams. You want to be an astronaut. You want to fly in the air. You want to be a princess. You want to be all those things. Those are dreams. You know, you have dreams. And as you're growing up, some are ad being added, some are changing, and some are fine-tuning. You're still holding on some of those dreams you had from when you were young. A lot of times, you know, dreams are very wild. You know, they're kind of wild, they are broad, just, you know, you just know that, okay, so certain time, I want to be this, I want to do that. And but vision is a little bit more specific in idea. It's very similar to your dreams, but it's a little bit more specific. You, you, you begin to discover that this is my vision in life. This is what I really want to become. This is what I really want to do. Also, again, we find out that there are, I like this topic because it's a God-given dreams and vision. There are some dreams and vision that it's not God-given. You know, you, you know, some of our dreams and vision are inspired by things around us. I remember when I was young, in fact, starting off, I've always wanted to act. I wanted to study theater arts. So that was my dream. My picture, I imagined myself acting. I remember as well as I was really very young, any drama we watch, you know, I would stand in front of the mirror the following day. I tried to act it out. Um, I remember my mom walking in on me once and she screamed. She stood and watched me. I didn't know she was watching. So she screamed. She said, oh, this is my daughter. What's wrong with you? Are you seeing spirits? <laughs> <laughs> you know, those you know, and as the time I was growing up, this began to change. And why did it change? Because one, I saw, you know, I, I saw bankers in those times, how they were so sleek, sharp, had, you know, great job. And then I wanted to become an accountant. So that became my dream. And so at the end of the day, sometimes your dreams are inspired by different things. You saw something you like, you saw someone looking so good and they're doing well in this profession, doing well in this thing, and then you just wanted to be part of it. You want to do it. So there are some dreams and vision that wasn't given by God. So it was just inspired by your desire to, maybe if you, you are, your vision is to be a millionaire, why? Was it God given? Okay, so people have different dreams and vision that probably was not God-given. But our focus tonight is the God-given ones. The dream and vision God puts in your heart. And it does put in every single human being's heart. Everyone that is alive, created by God, there is a purpose for our life. Our vision is usually tied to our purpose. Why am I here on earth? So that vision, that dream that you have, if it's not tied to your purpose here on earth, then it's probably not from God. Your vision is something that is why, why, the why, the vision is the why of your existence. 
and it could be in different ways. Thank God for, uh, you know, when uh, Sister Jupiter there was so giving an example of Esther. Esther was born, probably it wasn't a thing of, oh, okay, I want, I don't know whether she dreamt as a little girl, played, role played process or whatever, I don't know. But if God had chosen her to become, even though on generally it looks like she didn't qualify because one, she wasn't from that place, she was a slave. And I don't believe a slave would have qualified to become a princess. And that was the reason why that secrecy about where she came from came from. So God can put a vision and a dream in our hearts, either from when we were born. It has to be, I mean, it was something God had in mind before creating us. But we begin to discover it along the way. It becomes a like a, a burning desire in our hearts. It becomes a burning desire. You can't seem to shake it off. That's one of the ways you know it is God. Or it is you responding to a need. You are seeing a need in the land. You're seeing, you know, when I started the, you know, um, the heart of God, God, the, the young, the things I do with young people, I still hold Bible online Bible study with teenagers and young people, you know, every week. Well, how did that come about? If you had asked me long before now to say, do I ever want to work with young people or children? I would have said no. So I'm talking about sometimes it's not something you thought you had from the beginning. They could become a response. God will begin to put, you become uncomfortable by a situation. So I see young people, young, especially from our, you know, race, and I'm seeing what's happening. I'm seeing you know, on the TV, the stabbing, the, the lawlessness. I'm seeing them, you know, misguided. I'm seeing them, especially those who come from Christian home, and they go to uni, and that's it. They mix up, and they begin to go different ways. And they begin to bother me to the point that God said, this is why I want you to respond to this. I want you to do something about this. So your dream could be something that you have had a vision you have had in your mind all the while. And again, it could be a response. And there are examples I could give to all these two different ones that I'm talking about. One the response is ne ne Nehemiah. We know the story. If I'm just going to rely on our Bible knowledge of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is in the book of Nehemiah from uh, chapter 1. Nehemiah had asked, let me read that to us quickly. Nehemiah chapter 1, I'll just read the verse because of time's sake. Verse 4 of it. A news had come from Jerusalem to say all that has happened in Jerusalem, the devastating state, the wall of Jerusalem had been burnt and been brought down. Verse um, 4 of it, the Bible says, So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned. For many days, I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah probably all his life wasn't thinking about one day I'm going to be, be the person God was going to use to be rebuild the world of Jerusalem. But a burden came upon him as a result of the state of the situation. What is that burden God is putting in your heart? What is it that you're seeing around your community, you're seeing around you that is beginning to put a burden in you that you need to respond to? It was out of that burden that Esther became, did what she did. So sometimes it is also another example of somebody, you know, that from the beginning, God had put that in them. They knew about it right from the beginning was Joseph. Joseph was a young boy, but he had a dream. Is Genesis 37. Even though he didn't understand the clarity of the dream, but already God was putting in his heart to say, this is what I want you to do. Okay? There are many people like that, God has put in their heart to say this from the beginning, but all that, it was, as, it was there in the beginning, but they didn't know. But then a situation comes up. Another example I will give is Moses. Moses, from the beginning, he was born to solve that problem. He was born to be like a deliverer. But he didn't know 
But what was he responding to? He saw something. He went out. He look at the children of Israel, Exodus chapter 3. And he saw, you know, what was going on that they upset him. But we are, we are going to pray. We are going to be praying over some of these things that I'm pointing out already now. So what did he do? When he saw what was going on, he began to jump into it. Why? Because there was a burning desire in him to make a difference. So what did he do? He killed the person oppressing. He came to deliver by his own strength at this point. At the end of the day, you know how he ran into the wilderness. It was much later that God spoke to him and told him clearly his purpose, Exodus chapter 3. But before then, there was something already rising up in him. That even though he responded earlier than he should have, but he was responding to a desire, a passion. So you can discover our vision, our dreams by one of those two ways. And I know that every one of us here, there is something a body in God is putting in your heart. You are a solution. Every one of us, we are solution. Deborah was also somebody like that that rose up. He said there was a time that there was a Alice, the land was not safe anymore, bandits everywhere, there was issue. And nobody was responding, but there was something in her. She said, I, a mother, rose a mother in Israel. I'm praying that at the end of today's prayers, that many of us here will rise up. As mothers in those situations God has been talking your heart about, we will arise. We will say enough is enough of sitting back. Same way praying women network was better. Same way, you know, hope alive with Mary was better. To be honest with you, it was never something that I had growing up to say, oh, it is easy. They were all responses to things that I saw happening. And God is saying, this is what I'm leading you to, to do. I'm, you, I'm raising you as a solution to this issue. So they were all responses to a desire and a passion in my heart. Praise the Lord. So we are going to pray because we came to pray tonight. Our first prayer is that God will show us. That God will show us. God will open our eyes because what Nehemiah did, I'll read another place in that place for us. What Nehemiah did, when his passion came, he took it to God in prayers. He began to pray. Look at what God did next. Then the next day, he was serving the king. And then as he was serving the king, the king noticed. Actually, a month passed of him being boarding with this thing and praying. And the king noticed that he was not happy. And the king asked him, what is the problem? And he told the king what the issue is. And the king said, what do you want? What did he do? The Bible told us in verse 4. He said, then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to God of heaven. And then I said to the king, this is my request. He went to God with, uh, to with a prayer. God, what do I do? So that burden is in your heart. The next thing is, God, what do I do? How do I get on with this thing? And if you feel you don't have a body yet, and I believe that every one of us, I said from the beginning, you are not here by accident. There is a purpose. Either it is in that your place of work, in your businesses. This is not a calling to become a, a, a minister or to anything, but there is a calling in that place. There is a thing for you. There is a purpose for you. I don't believe that you're in that job just to earn a living. You are not in your nine to five for to earn a living. To be honest, God does not need that job to feed you. You don't need that job. God feeds the birds. But you are there for a purpose. And as Esther was beginning to lose sight of the purpose, thank God for Mother Kaya that said, hey, hello, lady, hello, snap back. Snap back, thank God for the tiara, thank God for the beautiful dresses. Snap back, snap back, you are in that place for a purpose. Can we begin to pray to God? Father, why am I here? Why am I where I am? The country where you are, the community where you are, on your street, in your neighborhood, even in your church, why am I here? God, why am I here? Why am I on earth? What's my purpose? 
Give me a clarity in this vision. Can we begin to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, this is our prayer. This is our cry, God. Oh, God, help us in the name of Jesus to discover, open our eyes. Because it was from you in the first place. It came from you in the first place. In the Kabbalah Basanto, Rida Karnele de Boshinda na Danzike Torobo Zanta. You told Jeremiah, you said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I told you to be a prophet. Every one of us here, you have called us to be something. Jehovah, open our eyes. Open our eyes. There's more to our lives than what we are, well, what we, where we are and what we are doing right now. There is more to us. Oh God. There is a purpose in the heart and the purpose and the mind of God. There is a purpose in God's mind. Father, Lord, if by any reason that every one of us have been pursuing our own purpose, we've been pursuing our own vision because it looks good, because somebody else is doing it, or this other person is doing it, or we have our own selfish purpose or selfish reason for, reason for which we are pursuing the purpose. Jehovah God draws back. Mighty God draws back, draws back again to go to discover why we have been created. God pull us back again. Lord, we are pulling back to the drawing board. It does not matter how far we have gone in our own ways. Nabala zolo bo shike panabata salaba kosheke telianda. Liza la makondo robo zile ni makanda la makondo robo sente. We are not going to be judged with how much money or what we did. It is what we have been given, what we did with what we have been given. Oh, my Father, my God, when Jesus gave the parable, the parable of the talent, he never judged them by what he did not give them. So even the one with one that went to bury his own, it's possible he had other talent of his own that he was trading with and probably prospering. In. The master did not bother about those ones. He said, that one I gave you, that's what I'm concerned about. That one I gave you. You might think you are doing what God's service right now. But is that what he called you to? Our focus tonight is God's giving. That's the key word for me here. God's giving. If we pursue our own, we will sponsor it by ourselves. And there will be no reward at the end. It's only when we pursue God's own. God's own. Jamma Kabala Zila Makoto Koteria. Father Mikando Robozina Nakande Lidosi Ketelia. Lord help us in the name of Jesus. We are women of purpose. We are not on earth just wandering through life. Lord, we are not just counting down in lives. Father, let what counts for you be what counts for us, God. At the end of our journey here on earth, you are not going to be asking how many children we had. Oh, how you know, are you married or you are not married? How many houses you have had? Or how much you had in your bank account? That is not what you are going to be asking us. It is what we did. It is what we achieve, the purpose we achieve, the purpose where you put us here. My Father, help us to discover it. Open our eyes to discover it. Open our eyes to discover it, O oh God. In the precious, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And now to those of all people that have discovered our purpose, we know this is what God has called us to. You know, part of the things I had written down in part of the prayers that we we're going to be praying. I was, I said, you know, and, uh, you know, Sister Dupe went on it and began to talk on it even before. I said, okay, when can you share it? When can you share it? When can you come out? When is it ready? There's always a period of preparation with God. God can give you a vision today. And you quickly want to just jump on it. There are some he said, right now, do it. But it took one month with Nehemiah praying over this situation. It took one month for Nehemiah praying. And within this month, I'm sure the king saw him. The king would have seen that he was downcasted, he was sad. He was... But the king never noticed, noticed until when the right time came. The king said, come on, what's going on? 
But did he still jump at it? He went again and prayed. We cannot but pray. We cannot but pray for God's timing. Moses almost ruined everything because he went on before the timing of the Lord. He had not gone through that period of preparation. God had to take him 40 years to prepare him for his purpose on earth. And you might think he was wasting his time. Some of us, we are in that, still in our preparation moment. Whatever you are doing now, you think you have really entered what God has called you to. You'll be stuck. That we are still, all that we are doing now is just preparation for the main thing. Moses, 40 years. God used 40 years to prepare him. What about Jesus? Jesus was not mistaken about his purpose here on earth. But then Jesus never showed up until he was 30. If he had come out earlier, what do you think would have happened? And we heard, I brought in my example, see, I put an example of Mary was another person. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2 verse 19, Mary kept this thing to herself. Mary did not share what God was doing and what she kept it to herself. The only person she was permitted to share with, apart from her, of course, her husband, was, was Elizabeth, who was also somebody that would help her midwife this thing. There is a timing. There is a timing of God. Let's begin to pray that God will grant us the wisdom to know his timing. That this a period of our preparation, we will not miss it. We will not jump out before it is time. We will not jump in before it is time. We will not go before God. Sakanta, Jesus didn't step out before God. Even when God called David and anointed him, David had a period in his life of preparation. My Father, my God, I pray that we submit ourselves to you. Help us to submit ourselves to your tutelage, to your discipline, to your preparation. Even as you, we know what you have called us to. Father, help us to know, discover the right time. I had to know the right time to disclose where she came from. If she had disclosed it earlier, only God knows what would have happened. There was a timing for everything. Father, help us to know that timing. Help us to know the timing, to know when it's a time for us to show out. But even while we wait, oh God, we not just wait and do nothing. Help us to keep walking with you. Moses and Joseph had a vision, but there was a time to wait. There was a set time. There was a set time. And in those times, it looked like nothing was happening in his life. It looked like he was going from... You know, wherever he was, like a favorite child, to being to a worse situation. And yes, he went to Potiphar's right from there. He went as if he was going down. But God was teaching him. God was preparing him. Father, in the name of Jesus, everywhere we are right now, I look like, God, you said you called me to this. You gave me this little. What is going on? Father, and help us to understand your timing. Help us to understand your teaching. Help us to understand what you are taking us to. Help us to submit ourselves, oh God, to your teaching. To submit ourselves, oh God, to you. To surrender to your school, oh God. To your refinery, oh God. To your land, oh God. God, in the Makoshia, Lesine Makonto Robo, Zilene Kimalanda Katalianda. Two by two. He said the vision is for an appointed time. Even if it had, he said, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. There is a waiting period. There is a preparation period. Father, Lord of heaven, may we not waste our time of preparation. He said, even if it had, it will surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. Some of us are getting discouraged already. You are getting discouraged already. You know what God said, but your life is not matching up with what God said. There is a timing of God. 
Ketelene ma. It is those that wait on the Lord uh, that shall renew their strength. Uh, they wait that they have waited uh, and their strength have been renewed. Uh, when then they come out, they begin to soar. We will begin to soar. You begin to soar. In this period of God's preparation, that wilderness, that cave of Adalam, well, it seems like you are in the cave of Adam. An anointed king is hiding in the cave. But in that cave, what God was doing with David was this thing, and he was clear. Mashala kapolo bozili makonte malanda gasu kapolo bozike pala nagada gada mando zike tene de gezula pakata. Is there? of those right now that are discouraged uh, because we are not seeing the growth we expected. We are not seeing the manifestation that we expected. Father, help us, oh God, to submit our favor, to submit our favor under your hands, oh God, as you form us, uh, as you shape us, uh, as you make us ready for what you have in store for us. Uh, in the precious, mighty name of Jesus Christ, we we'll pray. We are then going to pray. You know this thing about the vision? It is, as I said already, it is has to be God. Because God is doing something already. The question is, where do I fit in? In God's grand plan. How do I fit in? God, what are you doing and where do I fit in? No, God, not that God is walking in one place and you are busy in another place, in another field. In God's field, where am I? Wait, what do I need to be doing even as I'm waiting? What do I need to be doing now even as I'm waiting? David did not just hide in the cave of Adelam just with his hands folded and waiting that, okay, one day Saul will die and this happened. No, he was training on people. He was discipling people. He was raising giants. The Bible said people who are discouraged, who are broken down, depressed, battered, broke. They are the ones that found, they joined him where he was. David was already began to do his ministry, but he was, even though it was low-key, but in the process, God was building him. So right now, your question is, where I am right now, am I, which part of the field am I? And why am I doing it wholeheartedly? Am I doing it wholeheartedly? Even as I'm waiting for the big thing that God has given, vision and dream God has given me, David, Joseph also, <laughs> While waiting for that, for the throne, but just look at his life in Potiphar's house. So while the, there right now, how have I deployed myself? Can God find me faithful? Can Jehovah find me faithful? Can we pray? Zamba katoro In the little now, where I am planted in your vineyard, in this big work that you are doing, that little thing, maybe this washing dishes, is all that God, where God has put me right now. My father, help me. Help me to be faithful. 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 Oh, they maka paso koto robo jika pakata la dagazilia mando kobo senti. Help me to be faithful. Me to be faithful in what I am doing right now. It might not mean much, but help me to be faithful. Just today, just in fact, funny enough, I was listening to a preacher preaching today, and it, as I'm, it's just now that I remember the example. He was saying something, and he gave an example of himself. He said, "God has called him unto the nation. God told him." But meanwhile, while he was in his church and he was hoping and praying for a big thing, his pastor now told him, gave him a, a responsibility to be praying. You know, during service, praying for the pastor. You go and face the wall somewhere while pastor is preaching, the service is going on, and just be praying. He said, but I'm come to be a preacher, I'm a teacher. This is what pastor. He could have been angry and left, but he did that faithfully. But when the time came, when the time came, God brought him and brought him to UK. And then he began the ministry, sent him to UK to start pastoring. Before long, the ministry grew and he's doing greatly for God right now. But then he could have been angry and left what is God's calling. And then he gave an example. I know a lot of us, Christ, Stephanie Ike, a uh, big same Ike, because okay, she's, uh, um, uh, what's the name of the ministry? T.D. Jake's ministry, the daughter, well, that the daughter is uh, pastoring right now. The Bible was talking about, she, she shared the example of her. This lady, how did she become a pastor? She's a Nigerian, by the way. C.D. Jake's ministry and, you know, his daughter is pastoring now. She's the associate or uh, pastor there. How? She was an usher. She was only an usher. She was serving God faithfully as an usher. 
But when our time of manifestation came, when her time of manifestation came, she was picked from there faithfully. She was sharing uh, motivational stuff with her team, her ushering, ushering teams. She would share with them every day. And somehow it came to the attention of, 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 of Pastor Sarah Dix. And she said, oh, who wrote this thing? Say, I need to meet her. Long story short, she became the associate pastor. She, you see her social media and everything. But she was faithful in that little. Yes, Ike Okafor, that's the name. Stephanie Ike Okafor. And we begin to pray, Father, faithfulness in where I am. Faithfulness in where I am. At the right time, the hand of God will lift you. Let's not be in a hurry. Faithfulness. It, the little God gave me. Even if it is prayer, let me be faithful in it. Even if it is to teach children, then God help me to be faithful. In need, God will bring us to the place that he has called us to. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We are going to pray that God will help us to stay in the plan of God. It is so easy to go off. Very so easy to go off God's plan. Because of time, I'm rushing now. God plan it for us. Honestly, I cannot overemphasize that. You know what? The whole world, the social media and everything now. God has put something in your heart and then you're seeing how this other person is doing it. And they are getting better results than you. You are tempted to also, you know, deviate and do like they are doing so that you can get their results. You will never get their results. Why? Because God did not ask you to go in that direction. Let's pray that God will help us to stay with the plan. Whatever God has committed into your hands to do now, stay in God's plan. Don't go outside God's plan. Don't be tempted that this is how everybody is doing it. It's good to learn good practice from other people, but remember that if it goes against what God has told you, don't do it. Stay in the plan of God. Stay in the plan of God. Father, help me to stay within your plan. Let me know to shift to the left, to the right, oh God. To hear from you clearly. To hear from you clearly. How do you want me to carry out this mission? It will not be my own agenda. To introduce my own plans and agenda into it. Let me not add my own stuff. I say, okay, this is how they do it. If you want to blow this, no, we don't need to. We, all we need to do it faithfully in God's way. Father, help us to stick to your plan. Stick to your direction. Help us to stick to your plan and your direction for us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. May we not go out of our own way to go out to seek for help where there is no help. In the name of Jesus Christ, we'll pray. The next thing I want us to pray, my prayer, I have like 11, 12 points for us to pray, but I know we, we are probably not going to, to go through all of them at this moment, but the God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. The next thing is enemies. See, the fact that God has put that vision and dream in your heart does not mean everything will stay true. It does not mean everything will go smoothly. To be honest, if everything goes smoothly, thank you, thank you, sister. You know, if everything will go, if you know, if everything goes smoothly, then you should begin to question it. I will begin to question it. Go through the scripture. There is no one person. And not go through the scripture and go through our time. And everybody that is doing great things for the Lord. Go and hear their story. You know one thing about when I see somebody doing great things for their Lord, I am not as captivated about what they are doing as their story. I always long for their story. So when you hear me listening to messages and I'm listening to people, what I pick out is different from other people. I want to hear their story. I want to hear their story. And in their story, every single one of them, they've received opposition, they've received attack, they've received Nehemiah. He went out for a good cause. The Bible told us that Sambala and Tobiah, they came up against him. They begin they started by criticizing. Oh, these people are going to build the world. This useless world they are building. Even a fox walks on this hall, he's going to uh, wall, he's going to collapse. People will criticize what you're doing. People will laugh at you. People will call you names. If they don't, then it's not probably from God. Position is not a sign that it's not from God. 
some most times opposition shows that truly God's hand is against is in this thing because you are going against the enemy hell will let loose discouragement will come especially from areas that you least expect Joseph it was his own family these opposite people will try to put you down People will try to make little of that vision. And that's why you must be careful going back to one of the points who you share it with. But even if you don't share that, you start doing it, you will begin to hear. These things will begin to go wrong. And you're wondering, did God call me to do this thing? The Bible told us that Nehemiah did what he constantly prayed. He continued to walk while he was praying. He continued to walk while he was praying. That's Nehemiah chapter 4. For time's sake, I probably will not read it all. But from verse 1, the Bible says, I saw this happen. When Sambalad heard that we're rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. So they go from mocking. They came down to verse, verse 7. They actually now began to conspire. Verse 8, he said, and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. So they start from mocking, it didn't work. They carried on with their work. They prayed about it. Verse 4, he said, oh Lord, you know, hear my prayer. And they prayed about it. Verse 4, they, they, verse 8, they came literally to attack them. The enemy will attack that vision. Can we begin to pray? What did they do? They carried their sword. They were building, they had their sword. That is a lot of message on its own. They had their sword on their side and they had their building material, their whatever they're using to build. So while you are in this vision, in this, on this dream and vision of God, if you are not a prayerful person, believe you me, you will not survive. You must carry your sword. Yeah, their opposition should not stop you. They didn't stop them. They carried on building, but they were ready for battle. They were battle ready. You must be battle ready. You must be a woman of prayer. You must be, you cannot, I say it again a million times, you cannot fulfill God's purpose for your life, your dream and vision will not come to pass if you are not a person of prayer. Jesus knew that early enough. Before he started, 40 days they went to fast and pray. And constantly the Bible told us how he would take out time, take out time, take out time, take out time to go pray. Can we pray that God of heaven, confine us in the name of Jesus. I've got to be bold and courageous. For Joshua, God gave him the vision. Joshua just stretched out to say, I'm going to lead people. He was just a supporter. Going back on the point we made earlier on. But when Moses then God said, came to him, Joshua chapter 1, he said, you, it is you that I'm appointed to lead these people. Oh my God, really? Then you know all this where God has been training him. God has been training him. He was just an assistant. The time came that it was his time came. But the word God gave in Joshua 1 9 said, Be bold and courageous. And we pray to God for boldness. Boldness and courage. Any vision God gives him will be greater than you. I'm telling you, if it's not greater than you, then check it. Every single one of them asks, Why me? Why me? I can the least. Did you say, Who am I? Did you say, Who am I? It must be bigger than you. It must be greater than you. And that is what we must take you to your knees constantly to say, God, how can I do this? God, how can I do that? I don't have the resources. I don't have the victory, the, 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 the knowledge. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray tonight for your goodness. Father, courage, oh God, to move on above, against every resistance. Every resistance that will come up against us, uh, that are even coming up right now. Some of us are already packing it up. I say maybe it's not God because you are still facing opposition. Father, I pray that we will go back to rebuilding those walls again. We will go back again to continue what God has called us to do. Father, we shut down every opposition. We shut down every opposition. We take authority over them in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we take authority over them. Jeremiah said, God, I hand them over to you. Jeremiah said, you judge them over. Oh God, you want to fight for us, oh God. In the Kappa Santa, we put on the garment of courage and boldness uh, as we carry on, oh God, with your work. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Makotoro Bozila Bacante, Lazila Makotoro Bozile Decete, Lina Makamba Lando Sokotoro Bozinte. 
opposition from the pit of hell that want to discourage us, that want to pull us down, that want to cause us to turn our backs out. We say no to you in the name of Jesus. We silence every negative voice. The Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against us in judgment shall we condemn. We condemn every negative voice in the name of Jesus Christ. We condemn every negative voice in the name of Jesus. Every opposition will shut you down in that precious name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Another prayer I want us to pray. For every vision that the Lord gives us, we will need help. Not just the help of God, <laughs> we will need the help of man. Some of us, the burden becomes quite hard and heavy and you want to bail out because you don't have the help. There is no single person that the Lord used. All the examples I've given so far and even more examples, as much as you can think of, they all had help. Right from Old Testament down to New Testament, and even in our time, God raised people in their lives. Different sort of help. There are people who are, they are helping your life just to keep encouraging you to go on. That God sees what you're doing, He encouraged. You know, that is one of the things that Sister Dupe will do for me from time to time as well. Say, thank God for what you are doing, Sister Mary. God's right to you. And I value it. So people, some of them, that's just the help. There are people who go with raised to pray, give them a body to pray for you, to support you in prayers. There are some others that go with literally the, you know, day-to-day -day help. Where you are, I remember one time I was listening to Andrew Womack and he said, what God is doing with him, he was saying to him, he said, what God is doing with me I am not smart enough. I'm not even smart. That once he was sharing with his mother uh, the testimony of how God has grown them, they are this now, they are in many nations, they are doing this, 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 this. the mother's, she said the mother points her bony finger, she was very old at the time, at him I said, Andrew, you know you are not that smart. You are not, this, you are not that smart. It couldn't have been you. And Andrew said, yes, ma, I know. What did happen? Because it was the help of God. But to give him wisdom and to bring people. He said he has no idea of technology. He has no idea of so many things. All he knows is just to teach people. But God raised people to help him. Can we pray for the help of God? Moses had uh, 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 Aaron and Hor that held up his hand. And Joshua, while in battle, had Moses who held up his hand. And Moses also had these other people who helped support his hand. Let's pray for the help of God. Otherwise, we will burn out. Otherwise, we will not achieve, we will not go to the heights that God wants us to achieve, reach. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your help. We pray for your help. We pray for your help. So that you can mention Esther already. I had it. I wrote Esther an example. Esther had the eunuch. Esther had Mordecai. We must, we need help. Even Joseph had the copierer that helps to say a word for him. We need the help of God. Paul had Barnabas and others around him that helped him. Father, raise for us helpers. Raise for us helpers. Raise for us helpers. Raise for us help us in this vision. This thing you have put in our heart. Some of us, we have been missing this vision. We are about to start up and we say we don't know how to do this. Father, send help, oh God. Send help, oh God. Send help our way. Send people that you have appointed, that you have chosen that say, this one, go and support this person. Jehovah, raise people for us, oh God. Raise men and women that will support us. And sometimes the help we need is finances. If you know, for so if you, if you are into charity, you are Help. You need people. You need money. You need people that will say, you know what? For this, I will help you. When the first when I started the charity back home, the I, I had to go. What oh, charity back home? So a friend of mine from uni just called me. Said, Mary, what do you need? Let me know anytime you need anything. Let me know. And I was like, wow. And that was how God began to raise people. God will send help. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us your help. 
Send us your help. Send us your help, oh God. Help us that will help us, oh God. Father, this vision, it is not for a one-man vision. You never gave anybody a vision that was a one-man vision. Even Jesus needed help. You sent help to Jesus. Huh? How would you not send help? Even John the Baptist, the Bible said he had his own disciples also. He had people that he helped him. Makapasoto, Robo, Zika, Paladika, Salanda, Makato, Robo, Zika, Palianda, Zanta. The apostles couldn't have achieved what they achieved. They had to raise help us in the in form of dickinesses and dickens uh Marco Soko Toro Bozinte Nika Toro Bosanta Shabia Ketura Basanta Send us help in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh. Send us help, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh. Send us help, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Malabaka papa pa Robo Koson Tere de Baba Santa Raba Koso Robo Jitele de Gesilianta. Send us help, Father, in the name of Jesus. Finally, my time is up. We are going to pray. May we see increase. May whatever God has committed into our hands be fruitful. Let it be impactful. Let it fulfill its purpose. We don't want to be toiling and be busy. It's God's calling. God in Jesus actually called us to do it. But it's possible to just be going round and round and round and round and the results are not coming. Father, we pray for results. Results in the name of Jesus. Results, anything that is holding back our harvest. Anything in the name of Jesus, as you have called us into this world, a kapachanta, we call for the increase. Let there be result. Let there be impact. The impact must be about the kingdom. The impact must be the expansion of the kingdom. Whatever is done, we are doing that does not translate to the expansion of the kingdom. It is not, it's not of God. Find God as whatever we are doing. Because it is of you, because your hand is upon it, Father, we want to begin to see results. When you gave those talents, those people came back with the results. They returned with multiplication. They returned with a harvest. Father, caught us to return with you, know, with the way we came. Lord of heaven, we want to result. We want lives impacted. We want life changer. We want souls changer. We, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want people changer. We want children serving you. We want young people coming after you, oh God. We want women established and blossoming in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. That is the testament. That is the fruit, oh God, of the labor. Mashlan takapalodo zukopalapapa. Remba kasika talabako robosente. Lord, we ask for harvest. We ask, oh God, for results. Let there be results. When Jesus came and he fulfilled his mission, he was resolved. Paul said, I have finished the race. He knew there was result. He has imparted, right? He made more impact. He knew his impact. He knew it wasn't in heaven he found that. He said, I have done more than all the apostles put together. Why? Because he could see the result of what he's doing. Father, we know in heaven, we, we, we might not we, we might not see it all here. That's the truth. But God, by your blessing, may we see the result of what you're doing with us and through us. May we see the harvest, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May your name be glorified. We thank you. We bless you. We exalt you. Thank you, Lord. None of us remain the same after today. Fresh fire, O oh God. Fresh zeal for you, O oh God. Father, our life shall become intentional. It shall not be waking up every morning and say, okay, what happens today? We are going to live an intentional life from this day onwards. Intentionally living. Intentional living, intentional living, knowing that we are in our God-given purpose and destiny, that we are living the dream and the vision that the Lord has given to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.